All right, it's time to get started on this. The very first thing I like doing is imagining what we're going to build and trying to separate out the components of our application. So I did a quick wireframe here of what we want our project to look like. We want to have some sort of a logo. We want to have a user's name displayed with their rank. And this rank is going to correspond to how many face detections they've done compared to all the other users. So we're going to want some sort of a sign in and sign out feature. So this is the home page, but if they click sign out, they'll be signed out. And in order to sign in, there'll be a sign in form. We have a URL input here where we can enter a URL for an image. If we click detect, then it will display the image with the face detection on hopefully the face. And we obviously want it to be responsive. But looking at this, if I was going to divide this into components, I see that there's a navigation component. There's maybe a user info, maybe rank component. There's a logo component of some sort. There's an input form component. There's an image component. And possibly within that, a, another component that does the image detection. Okay, so I think the first step that we can do is to start building out these components using Create React App. And the sign in and registration form is maybe something that we can work on afterwards. All right, so let's minimize this. So I've actually just ran Create React App. I called this project Face Recognition Brain. You can do the same as well. But as you can see, I haven't changed anything. If I do npm start, I have the skeleton of what Create React App gives us. All right, to start off, I'm going to start removing some of the things that I don't need. I know that I don't need their logo, so I'm going to delete that. Okay, and then if we go to app.js, and we can just remove the logo. Okay, and we can just remove everything that's inside here. So we're left with just a div with the class name app. And let's just build out some components, even though we haven't created them. Let's just build them out so we have them in our heads. We have a navigation component. That's where we have the sign out. We have a logo component that we'll create. We also have perhaps an image link form. That's our input form. And then finally, we have our face recognition, which will be the image with the face recognition on it. Looking at these four components, I think we can build them fairly fast. So let's start to do that. I'm going to actually comment out, I'm going to wrap these in a curly bracket so that it's a JavaScript expression and then comment them out in the standard JavaScript way. So we can start off with navigation. As we know, because this project is going to get a little big, we're going to just create a new folder. We'll call it components. And within these components, we'll create a new folder and we'll call it navigation. And this navigation folder will have anything related to our navigation component. So that is CSS, JavaScript. In our case, it's just JavaScript for now. So we'll just do navigation.js. All right. Oh, we have our file all set up now. So in here, we do the standard import react from react. And it's going to be a simple component with no state. So again, we can just do a pure function. And it won't accept any parameters for now. We'll just simply return, just do something like a nav. And this navigation, because we're working on our home screen for now, we're just going to have a p tag. 
that says sign out. And we obviously want to export default navigation. Save that. Let's go back here and import that now. So we'll do import navigation from current directory. We want to access the components folder, navigation, then navigation.js. We don't need to put the JS at the end. Save that. Oh, and I have capital components, should be lowercase. And it should be S. Yes. Let's go back. We have a nice little sign out. Uh, don't worry, it's going to start looking much better than that. Uh, we want this to actually display on the right hand side. So a nice, simple way of doing that, we can just add a style attribute for now. And again, we're passing in an object and we'll just say display will be flex and justify. And remember, because this is a JavaScript object, we can't do this, it's camel case. So content in React, you just use camel case anytime you need to use a dash. So justify content will be flex end. So it's at the end to the right. Save this and it's to the right. We need a bit of padding, but for now, that's fine. And you know what? Looking at this, I have a feeling we're going to need some CSS. So I'm going to install tachyons here so that we don't have to worry too much about CSS. And I can just give you the tachyons properties because again, CSS is something that is very dependent on the specific project. And because we've already covered it, we don't want to spend too much time on it. So using tachyons, I'm just going to use their, oh, I got to install it. Let's clear this. And this way, when we go to app.js, we can just, or in our index.js, we can just import tachyons. Perfect. So using tachyons, I'm going to start styling this. And you can just pause the video and copy and paste this if you want on your project or grab the project files afterwards. So based on size, I'll do that. It's going to be a link. It's going to dim when I click on it. It'll be black. It's going to be underlined. Padding of three. And pointer when we hover over it. Kind of reads nicely with tachyons. I'm a big fan of them. Let's do npm start. All right, look at that. That's a lot better already. And you know what? When we look at this white screen, it's kind of discouraging. It feels like we haven't done much. So let's add a, a nice background so that, again, we're, look, we're making a bit of progress and we're not looking at a blank screen. Even though styling is not the most important in an app, I do like having a bit of progress when we start a project just for that confidence boost. So in index.css, I'm going to add a background to family. And this is a gradient that I really, really like. So I'm just going to copy and paste it here. You can find your own gradient and decide what is good for you. I'm going to save that. See, we're just using linear gradient. Look at that. That's already much better to look at. All right, so navigation, from what I can see, it's pretty much all we want for now. We don't need to add any functionality. We're just building the skeleton. So let's move to building the input. So the input, we called it the image link form. Oh, actually, let's do the logo first because I see it here. I'm going to put the comments out over here. Again, we are going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. And we'll just say logo from components, logo and logo.js. We're just going to create a new folder again. And within that, we'll have a new file, logo.js. And by the way, if you're getting sick and tired of constantly clicking JavaScript, then making sure that Babel is the default instead of the regular JavaScript so you can see JSX. 
Well, if you go to Views in Sublime and then go to Syntax, you can do Open All with Current Extension as Babel JavaScript. And this way, every time you open a JavaScript file, it'll, this will be the default extension. All right, with the logo, you know what? To make things fast, I'm just going to copy the navigation, paste it in here, and I'm just going to change navigation to logo. And obviously, we want to return something different. So we'll say this one will have a div. And we'll give it a class name again using tachyons. Some margins that are nice, and that's margin top to zero. And then for the logo, we have nothing yet. But I want to show you this cool library that I found, which is React Tilt. And it actually allows you to create something like this. They can hover and tilt around. Again, beauty of React and NPM is that you can use these packages to make your project a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to copy this command npm install dash dash save React tilt. And in case you're wondering what what the dash dash save is. Uh, before in the earlier versions of NPM, if you wanted to have the package installed on package.json and the dependencies, you had to do dash dash save. Now it does it by default, so you don't have to do the dash dash save anymore. And you can see that React Tilt and Tachyons is in our package. All right, let's start that back. And if we go to the documentation here, it actually gives you exactly what you need. You just import tilt from React Tilt. So we'll do that. So we have the tilt component now. And we just copy and paste this tilt component that they've created for us. Again, the power in being a web developer and just overall in general, it's nice to be able to use things that people have built and also be able to share things that you've created. So you can create your own React component that other people can use and it makes things, as I said before, more reusable. So looking at this, everything is good. I'm gonna change the height and width, maybe a little bit smaller. And for now, we'll have this alien figure, although we're probably gonna change it with our to our own logo. But I'm going to save this. And we get an error about emojis, uh, but it's fine for now. If I go back. All right, it's looking a little bit off. Let's see what's going on here. So if we go to logo, let's just add some tachyons. I see the border radius two and shadow two. So this way I can see more clearly where it is okay all right so it's working but our colors are a bit off it looks like we need to add it some background for this but look at that it's already working nicely so i'm going to create a new file logo.css and we're going to make the background it's already using the tilt class name so we can just piggyback on that to say tilt And I'm going to use the same background as we have in our index.css file, just because I think it looks nice. I'm going to copy that. Put the same background in here. And then the only thing we need to do is just import logo.css from the current directory. Let's check that out. Look at that. That looks great. So one of the cool things you can do with Tilt is that you can add it a few options based on what you want it to do. So you can read through this yourself. But I kind of want this to be more exaggerated a bit. And we can do that by just changing the max to something a little bit higher. If I save that, all 
All right, that looks that looks nice actually. All right, the next thing we want to do is we want to change this alien emoji. We want to have an actual logo. So let's grab a free logo that we can find online. So let's just add find a royalty free icon and I want it to have a, a brain as an icon. So let's see if we can find something here. All right, this might be good. Let's do brain and see if we can find any cool icons. Oh, there you go. This might be a nice one. Let's do PNG and we'll uh, 100 pixels a little. Actually, that works. We can have different files, but we'll just do PNG, 100 pixels. We will download it. Nice, that looks great. And we'll just move it to our project folder which is on our desktop. And we can just actually open it up and put it into the folder that we want. In our case, it will be the logo component. So let's move that in there and we'll call it brain.png. Perfect. I'm going to close that. And now that we have brain.png in there, we can just import. We can just call it brain from the brain.png. And that will be the default name given to it. So we can actually just create an image tag in here. We're going to remove the little alien and we'll just do image. And this image will have a source obviously and that source will just be our brain so let's see if that works make sure we close the tags here save we're also getting an error saying that we should have an alt tag so let's just do that alt equals logo save that Look at that. There you go. We need our brain a little bit lower. So I'm going to do that quickly with some CSS. We're going to do padding of three. And just because I've done this before and I know we need a bit of padding, I'll just add a style on the image that says padding top of five pixels. I'm going to make that smaller just so you can see it better. Let's save. See how that looks. There you go. Looking nice. We got ourselves a nice logo. You can see that we're moving through this fairly quickly. It's nice using React. And uh, as long as you figure out your styles, it's nice to be able to use all these different components to build out your website. So let's go back to app.js and see what else we have. We need the image link form. So again, let's remove the comments and bring up the image link form. We'll create, once again, a new component that is the image link form. We'll use our good old copy and paste. And we won't be needing the tilt or the logo. We're going to have an image link form. Image link form. 
All right, so let's think about what we need in here. We definitely want to have a paragraph that we'll give it a class name. So it has size F3. And within here, we will just say, and I like instead of using text this way, because it is JavaScript, I like wrapping it in curly brackets and then doing the quotes. And we'll say this magic, if I can spell, brain will detect faces in your pictures. Give it a try. All right, so we have the paragraph. We also want to have another div where we have an input and a button, perhaps. So we'll just do div. We'll have an input of type. We'll just be text. This is where we'll be entering our URL. Closing that bracket. And then finally, we'll have a button that will say detect. And again, we can add a few class names to this just to make it look nicer using tachyons. I'll do, let's say, size of four, padding of two. Width is going to be 70%. It's going to be centered. And because I said width 70%, I can do something along the lines of this. I can say width is 30%, so total of 100% for that. We'll grow when you hover over it. F4, it'll be a link. And this is, like I said before, a few tachyon commands that you can look up. It's more for stylistic reasons, so we don't really need to worry too much about it. But most of them should be pretty self-explanatory. Background, light, purple. Let's save that and see if that works. All right. Awesome. We want these to actually be in one line together. A good way to do that is again using the div, the parent div that's wrapping them. And we can just give it a class name. We're going to do display flex and justify content center. We can just create a class on the app.css because I feel like we're going to use that a lot. And we'll just say center is display flex and justify content will be center. You're going to use that a lot. So like I said, it's better to just have it there. Oh, and I think I, oh, I put a comma in there instead of a semicolon. There you go. If I do center here now, there you go. That looks much better. 70% width with 30% width, but we kind of need something to wrap it here and make it a little bit smaller. So we'll add another div. And this div will have class name of some tachyon magic, which will be PA4, border radius th three, and shadow, which is one of my favorite properties because it gives it a nice shadow. All right, so it looks a little bit off. We need, to, we need to fix a couple of things. And you know what? I, I think for this one, we're going to need a few more CSS properties. So I'm going to create a new file in our image link form. dot CSS. And within here, we can just create a, a form class. And we'll give it a width of 700 pixels. If I save that, and I'll give it the center property here as well. All right, that looks better. Now, for the background, again, I don't want it to be the exact same of this. Hopefully, we can use a nice pattern. And I have one of my favorite 
pattern galleries here where you can pick CSS patterns. So the one that I really like is the honeycomb. And we can just copy and paste this, which Paul Salentini created for us. Thank you, Paul. And just add it in here. Let's save that and go back to our project. And we actually should be adding form in here. Oh, and we don't see any differences because we need to import our file. All right, perfect. Um, again, we should add display flex to here so everything's on one line so we can just use the center class name. And there you go. Look at that. We have our pattern. We have our button that grows. And I do want the uh, the mouse to actually be like this, a pointer. And I know that for any buttons that I create on here, that's the default behavior that I want. So I can actually go all the way to the top of index.css file and just say that buttons are going to have cursor of pointer so that it affects every button on the page. There you go. That's much better. All right, we're building this pretty fast. I'm I'm impressed. We're doing we're doing a good job. So we have the input and the last thing is the image. But I think we need some functionality before we can actually display the image. We forgot to do the rank, which we want something at the top. So let's do that. Let's add a rank component. And this rank component will give us our username and our rank compared to all the other users that have submitted pictures. We can simply copy and paste. And you can see that there's a lot of repetition here, but we're building things really, really fast because we have a common way of creating these components, which is really, really nice. Copy the ranks. And by doing Command Control G, you can actually select all the instances of image link form and change it with logo. Again, pretty awesome feature of Sublime Text. Oh, and instead of rank, this should say, or instead of logo, this should say rank. And within here, we'll just create a nice little component. By the way, if you're wondering how I'm adding these styles so fast, trust me, it took me way too long to figure out what looks good and what doesn't. I'm just avoiding you the pain of watching me figure out what styles look best and going back and forth with the Google Chrome developer tools. Like I said, styling is just so specific to each app that once you get to your specific app, it'll, it'll be very dependent on your specific needs. So as long as you know the basics, you'll be able to evolve and change the style of the app, whichever way you want. So again, in here, we'll just have, for now, this is gonna be dynamic, but for now, we just need some text. We'll just say, Andre, Andre your current rank is, and below it, we'll do the same thing maybe a little bit bigger this time around. We'll do F1, which is a little bit bigger. And it'll say number five for now. Save that. Yeah, let me put that back there. Save. And all right, it's starting to look better. I think the last thing we want to do before we go into the next video and add some functionality is this font is pretty generic, so we want to change that a little bit. So I'm going to change the font in index.css because, well, this is going to affect our entire app. And you can pick your own, but I like courier new. In case, 
in case the web browser or the computer that it's on doesn't have that, I'll add some backup. And yeah, this font I am a big fan of. Let's check it out. Look at that. Very nice. Build that pretty fast. All right, you know what? The very last thing I, I will do, even though I said this was the last thing, is one of my favorite things is this particles.js library. And you'll actually see it in a lot of websites being used. Particles.js, yeah, it lets you do these sort of things. So you can have a background that's interactive. And you can change how many particles you have and do all these cool things. And I think it makes your web apps look really, really nice. So we're going to use this. They actually have a React version that we can use. So we can just say particles React NPM. And there's a few you can pick from. But this is the one that I used before, so we'll stick to this one. And again, we can just copy and paste the NPM install. And just so I don't have to keep stopping and starting this, if you do Command D with Terminal, you get a new window. But if you want it to be below, if you do Command Shift D, you'll get a window right below it. So in here, I can just do npm install. So now that that's downloaded, if we go down to here, we can see exactly how we can use it. So we can just copy and paste these particles component. We'll add it because it's the background right below the main div element. And as you can see, there's a couple of options here. And there's a few things that you don't really need in here. So I'm going to remove those. And for the parameters, I don't like having our render method be so ugly. So I like taking out the parameters and creating a constant called, let's call it particles options. And outside of here, we can just create that variable just to keep things clean and have this object configurable. So if we save this, let's see how that looks. Oh, I'll get an error because I haven't imported the particles library yet. So again, going back here, I can just copy and paste the import syntax, save it, and close this for now. Let's go back to our app. You see over here that it's overwritten on top of everything and everything else is below it. This needs a bit of configuration and it's a little bit tricky, but we can add something like a new class name and we'll call it particles. And we'll create this particles class in our CSS. You know what, all this over here we don't use, so I'm going to delete just to keep things clean. And we'll say particles. And this is a new CSS syntax that you might not have seen. It's called fixed. So everything stays, even if you scroll, everything stays exactly where it is. And you can actually get these properties on the particles website. So if you want to read up more on it, you can check it out. But it makes sure that everything is full screen, the background's fixed. And finally, to make sure that everything is underneath our, the rest of our app, we do something called Z index. And Z index you're allowed to use when you use position fixed or position absolute. And it tells you what layer you want the image to be on. In our case, we're adding minus one because we're saying that this should be below pretty much anything else on our website. If we go back, all right, and uh, you can see here that the patterns are a little bit weird. And I've played around with it already to figure out what particle options I enjoy. And you can customize this and play around with it yourself. 
the main thing I want to do is have the number of particles to definitely have a lot more. So I'm going to say value 30 and density will have a few options. That should make our app look a lot nicer. Look at that. Again, all these options, you can read up on them on particles.js and the NPM package itself. You can make it interactive as this if you want, but there's definitely a lot of options for you. All right, this is pretty incredible, right? We did that pretty fast. And the cool thing is that everything is responsive. Look at that. So as I move this, we can display this app on our phone as well and all these mobile devices. Very cool. So we took care of the view and the basic components for now. In the next video, we're actually going to start adding some functionality over here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.